everyone, today's a pretty cool episode because I want to talk about a study that actually confirms and backs up some of the, uh, how should I say, folk wisdom of athleticism, of bodybuilding, and gaining muscle mass. A study published in Scientific Reports, Nature, examined how gene expression in muscle cells changes after exposure to hypertrophy, which the researchers called loading. This means weight loading, as in doing resistance workouts that break down muscle, and thus encourage muscle growth through the subsequent muscle repair. The researchers began their paper by talking about how skeletal muscle can be programmed, in a, in a manner of speaking. They mean that muscle tissue can be stimulated by physical activity in early life, and this plays a role in muscle density and muscle function in later life. They talk about how muscle cells in children are much more pliable than those in adults. The muscle mass of children is more impacted by epigenetic and environmental factors, whereas the information for adults just isn't as well understood. To conduct their experiments, the researchers studied the muscle cells of eight males with no previous history of resistance exercise, who then underwent three treatments over the course of 21 weeks. Each treatment lasted for seven weeks. The first treatment was seven weeks of resistance training, doing exercises for an hour a day, three days a week. Then they went through seven weeks of unloading, where they didn't perform any resistance training at all. The last of the three treatments was another seven weeks of exercise. They did all kinds of weightlifting exercises, and they meticulously measured their repetitions and the increased weight that they could push as they got stronger throughout the treatment program. Now, during these treatments, the study participants had their muscle mass and their strength measured. The researchers examined their muscle cells on a molecular level, finding changes in gene expression that correlated with epigenetic markers. Let me give you a really super quick rundown on epigenetics. Basic genetics involves stuff like the sugar phosphate backbone of a DNA helix, and the order or the sequence of the nucleotide bases that are held between them. Now, epigenetics, which literally means outside the gene or above the gene, involves the placement of regulatory molecules on the outside of the DNA helix, on the outside of the sugar phosphate backbone. These regulatory molecules, uh, they're really just kind of like signals, they help the cell determine what genes to express and when. This controlled epigenetic regulation of what genes get expressed where and when is just as critical to our healthy development and our biology as the actual nucleotide sequences in the DNA itself. So with that explained, the researchers' summation of their study should make a lot more sense. The senior and corresponding author of the study was Dr. Adam Sharples, and his PhD student was Robert Seaborn. Together, they said, quote, in this study, we've demonstrated the genes in muscle become more untagged with this epigenetic information when it grows following exercise in earlier life. Importantly, these genes remain untagged even when we lose muscle again. But this untagging helps switch the gene on to a greater extent and is associated with greater muscle growth in response to exercise in later life, demonstrating an epigenetic memory of earlier life muscle growth. The takeaway information from this study is that if your muscle cells experience hypertrophy, uh, like they would from physical exercise, this will actually alter how your body regulates the expression of genes in your muscle cells. This regulation has to do with uh, muscle cell growth and expressing the kinds of enzymes and having the kind of nutrient uptake that's required for uh, larger muscle growth. Critically, this epigenetic regulation is conserved. So even if you stop working out for months, or maybe even years, when you start working out again, your muscle cells will literally remember their former growth. And this means that you can build that muscle back with less effort than it took to build it up in the first place. This is something that bodybuilders and weightlifters have suspected for quite some time, but this research actually backs it up. It validates that claim. Mr. Seaborn also made an important point about the implications of this study with regards to professional athletes and steroid use, or the use of other performance-enhancing drugs. He said, and I quote, If an elite athlete takes performance-enhancing drugs to put on muscle bulk, their muscle may retain a memory of this prior muscle growth. If the athlete is caught and given a ban, it may be the case that short bans are not adequate 
as they may continue to be at an advantage over their competitors because they've taken drugs earlier in life, despite not taking drugs anymore. More research that uses drugs to build muscle rather than exercise used in the present study is required to confirm this.